Hello internet and welcome. Today we're talking about the Cheerson CX-10 mini drone. This guy is tiny, less than three centimeters from prop to prop, a little more than an inch and a quarter, but he packs a punch. Running on 2.4 gigahertz, four channel controls, this guy boasts a six axis gyro system for stabilization. There are a few missteps here and there, but mostly this guy is solid. I feel like this drone is for quadcopter enthusiasts who really want to have something small wherever they are. They can throw it in their backpack, their pocket, wherever, and you can have it anywhere. Three days after I got this guy, I went to a conference in Atlanta. I stayed at the Marriott Marquis Hotel. I decided to take this mini drone with me. I just threw this little guy in my suitcase, and he showed up alright. The hotel was amazing. When it was built, it had the largest atrium in the world. 470 feet tall. By my calculations, it has over 3 million cubic feet of airspace. It is enormous. There was no way I wasn't going to fly this guy there. I stuck the mini drone in my pocket, rode the elevator up to the 47th floor, turned it on, synced it up, and flew it over. I didn't have my nice camera with me, so I was forced to use my cell phone. The yellow line represents the beginning of a horizontal safety rail system that's on every floor. The red line represents the beginning of empty space. Nothing but 470 feet of air from here to the ground. Unfortunately, this first shot cut out right after this one flip, so I had to delete a couple of things, start her up again, and take her out. That was nerve-wracking. The controls are iffy on this guy. It's so small, it's hard to know exactly what you're doing. But once I got into it, it performed like a dream. No stumbles, no nothing. Did a couple of flips, came back. No big deal. 470 feet, so what? Let's take a closer look at the design of the quadcopter itself. Its body is made of two separate parts, the top orange part and the white bottom part, and sandwiched in between is the main board. It's all held together by four screws on the bottom, as well as four clips by each of the propellers. The clips look pretty fragile, and one of mine was already broken when I got it, but they're not really important in the entire assembly, so it's okay. The propellers measure a little bit less than three centimeters in diameter, and are made of a soft, pliable plastic, which makes it great for indoor use as nothing will be permanently damaged by them, but it also makes them a little bit more susceptible to damage themselves. While I was getting flight footage for this video, I actually broke one of the props. But fortunately, it comes with a full extra set of props. You just have to know which ones to put where. Like most quadcopters, two of its propellers rotate clockwise, and two rotate counterclockwise. By changing the rotation speed of one pair of these propellers at a time, torque is induced on the system, thereby creating yaw on the aircraft. So when you have to change propellers, make sure you put the right ones on or else it won't fly. Beneath each of the props is a very small brushed DC motor. There's no gearing involved. The propellers are attached directly to the motor, which means they spin an extremely high RPM. A consequence of the small size of this quadcopter is a large bump underneath where the battery is stored. No battery information is visible from the outside, but we'll get to that later. The charging port is located on the side next to the on-off switch. To hook it up, plug the USB charger tab side up into the quadcopter, and the other side into your computer or USB power supply. The USB cable will light up red when the quadcopter is charging, and it will turn off when it's finished charging. For me, this took about 18 minutes, but depending on what kind of power supply you use, it will take more or less. You should expect around 5 minute total flight time. Let's move on and look at the transmitter. As I mentioned earlier, it's really small. Almost too small. But once you get a little bit of practice in, it makes sense. You just have to be very deliberate with how you move the controls. Speaking of controls, let's go over what you get. You have your four trim setting buttons, the on-off power switch, and most importantly, you have the two Cryptophobia inducing joysticks. Irrational fears aside, the holes in the joysticks help you not lose control. The joysticks also serve a second function. By pressing down on the left joystick, you can choose between three different modes of control sensitivity. Pressing down on the right stick switches everything to flip mode. After that, all you have to do is press the right stick in any direction to perform a flip. Finally, on the back is the battery compartment, where you put the two included AAA batteries. Every time before you fly, you have to pair the quadcopter with the transmitter. First, turn the quadcopter on. Four LEDs now turn on that we couldn't see before. The blue ones are the front and the red are the back. That's important for orientation while in flight. 
Next, turn on the transmitter. Push the left stick all the way up and all the way down. If the blue light stopped flashing, you're now all synced up. You can fly your quadcopter. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's get a look at what's inside. First, let's look at the controller. It took a little bit of time to get these open, so I'm gonna speed it up here. But if you wanna see the full unedited dissection, just click the eye in the top right corner. There's also a link in the description, as well as an annotation on screen. Okay, now that it's completely apart, you can see there's not really much to this controller. The joysticks are in simple gimbal setups with potentiometers in each dimension. The vertical axis of the right gimbal has a gray potentiometer that's spring-loaded. The corresponding potentiometer on the left controller is green because it's not spring-loaded. The power switch is a very cheap, simple part, as are the momentary switches which operate the trim. There's a little microcontroller and a piezo transducer to create the beeps. The back of the board is much less interesting. There are four little pins to hold the gimbals in place, and two solder points for the connection to the battery compartment. Finally, on the front of the board again, you can see the momentary switches underneath the gimbals which are responsible for switching flight modes and changing to flip mode. Now let's take apart the quadcopter. First I take out the four screws on the bottom, pop off each propeller, and then carefully separate the three layers, making sure to keep everything in its place. Alright, now that we have the quadcopter open, you can see all the tiny components that are attached to this board. Before we get to all that though, we have to look at this tiny little square of clear plastic that's between the battery and the board. I assume it's there for insulation, but we need to get it out of the way just to make sure we don't lose it. Okay, so we finally get a good look at the battery. Turns out it's 100 milliamp hours, which is actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Its leads are soldered directly to the board, so you can't really switch it out. As it turns out, the four small motors are actually not connected to anything. They're just free floating in the board, but once you put the top and bottom shells on, it holds them in place. It looks like this part right here is actually the antenna. It seems to be built into the board, which is weird because on all my other quadcopters, small or not, they all have actual antennas that they just tuck into the body. You can see that taking off the bottom and top shells actually doesn't mess with any of the electronics at all. When you flip the power switch, everything comes on. I'm sure the motors would rev up too, but I'm not going to try that. Without the stability of the top and bottom shells, it would not be a good thing. What's interesting is the date of manufacture is actually printed on the PCB. As you can see, this one was made on September 1st, 2014. It doesn't really mean anything, I just thought it was kind of interesting. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, this little quadcopter is a very fun toy. And that's what it is, a toy. You'd be hard pressed to find a camera small enough for it to carry, or really any other use for it. This guy is just for fun, and that's okay. If you've never flown a drone before, I would highly recommend this one. It's small enough to where there are no real consequences for crashing, and it's easy enough to control that almost anyone can get a hang of it in less than 10 minutes. And once you get the basics down, you can experiment with flips and all the different sensitivity levels. So overall, I give this little guy maybe 3.5 stars out of 5. It's nothing special, but its simplicity and battery life make it worthwhile. However, the cheap parts that it uses bring up durability questions, and its propellers seem to break too easily. But again, the Cheerson CX-10 is just a toy, and as long as you keep that in mind, you can have a lot of fun with it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see the full dissection and reassembly process, click here, or the link in the description below. I plan on making quite a few more videos like this in the future, so to make sure you never miss a single one, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Well, that's all I got for today, internauts. Until next time, keep on clicking.